What's up everybody, it's me, Brent Lee, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about Armor 2.0. More specifically, I'm gonna talk about how you upgrade the armor, how do you get mod components to put into the mod slots, how do the mod components work, what's the economy, what's the cost? Everything that we learned about in the hour and a half long Bungie stream that we just had a couple weeks ago, we're gonna sum that up in this video and save you some time, so here we go. Now one of the first thing you'll notice in the UI here when you're viewing the character is you can see your sparrow and you can see your ghost. So if you're the type of person who has to get your, your looks and your vanity of your armor to match your sparrow and your ghost, well, you can check it all out in this one simple view. You will also notice in this UI here that the glimmer has been raised to 250K. That's right, we now have a 250K max limit on glimmer. That's great news. Now one of the most important parts that's coming with uh, Armor 2.0 is now we have six traits. We have mobility, discipline, intellect, strength, recovery, and resilience. So we're getting some of the traits we had in D1 and combining it with those that we currently have in D2 to be able to have a monster killing machine as Bungie has said. Now a lot of people are worried about the fact that we are losing all of our current armor. Now you can go into your collections and pull that armor out, you know, they're legendary or exotics uh, that will be ready and slotted with armor 2.0 but they'll be fixed rolls. So even though you're out in, uh, in PVE, you can go do um, Escalation Protocol and start getting new armor again with random rolls and they'll have the slots. But again, if you don't wanna do all that, you don't wanna go back for the grind, go into your collections, pull the armor out that you like, the look of or whatnot, but it will be fixed rolls, but you'll have the mod slots available to stop modding. And when it comes to actually socketing a mod into a piece of armor, the armor is going to have an energy base cost associated with it, whether it be solar, void, or arc. And at that point, you're going to have mods within your inventory that either uh, are void, solar, or arc as well. And that will be the cost in order to socket a mod. All right, if we take this Titan helmet here, for example, and it has void uh, attribute associated with it, you see it has five energy available. And the mods below have a cost of either three, one, four, or six. So you can see that uh, hand cannon loader here at six, he doesn't have enough energy to socket that mod in. But he can go in and do a grenade launcher loader or maybe hand cannon targeting, uh, scout rifle, you know, at the cost of either three, four, or two, respectively. Now to get more energy so that you can um, socket higher costing mods, you can upgrade your armor. And this image here, this helmet for the Titan has been masterworked and now have 10 energy available and you can start uh, socketing higher costing mods across the three slots or if you want to do just the two slots you can do that as well so you can have six um, the sniper rifle costing six energy in that one slot and go back to the second slot and put in something that's, that costs four maybe three or two and still have energy left over so you can do all three sockets and mod in what you want. The Bungie did state there will be 11 general mods that don't have a energy associated with it so no void or solar or arc associated with it we'll have just regular mods and you can socket those in at any place but they will still cost you on your energy that's available according to that piece of armor so what is the economy going to be like when trying to upgrade the armor well it's going to take glimmer legendary shards enhancement cores enhancement prism and then finally to get it to that level 10 master work you're going to need ascendant shards and we were told there's going to be a ton of activities and daily bounties, weekly bounties. So there'll be uh, lots of places where we can get everything that we need. Uh, pretty much like how we have enhancement cores right now, you can get that. There's a plethora of about there. So what happens to the mods that we socket into a piece of armor? Are we going to have to go and get the mods again? Well, no. Once you obtain a mod, you know, from an activity, daily, weekly bounties, or whatever it may be in the game, once you get that mod, you will always have that mod. You can sit there and sock it in in a helmet, legs, chest, arms, whatever, and it will always be there. You're never going to lose it. You never have to go try to find it again. And yes, exotics will be Armor 2.0 ready. And that is, you can go to your collections, pull one of your favorite exotics out, and it will be ready for you to so uh, slot some mods into, but there will be fixed roles with those exotics. And of course, you can obtain new exotics or the same exotics with new roles out in PVE activities. And of course, once you're done socketing in those mods, 
uh, you know, for that PvP armor set or that PvE activity that you're getting ready to do, you gotta make your guardian look good doing it, right? So you're gonna tap down on the appearance uh, part of that piece of armor, and you're gonna have seasonal ornaments here uh, from the sets we've collected from playing Destiny 2. You apply whichever one you want, whatever look you want to go for. You can then add the shader in that you want. And also, if you were able to get the uh, Solstice of Heroes glow effect, that will also be available to you on these sets on any piece of armor. Well, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to wrap up here. And just to summarize everything, you know, I just wanted to show off how Armor 2.0 works, how to socket a mod, you know, based on the, the energy of that mod, whether it be solar, void, or arc, and, and how those mods will cost towards that energy and then of course you know how to mash work that armor and the economy behind that and then changing the look of the armor pretty simple it's gonna be fun going in there and playing around with different builds doing different mods uh, here and there to see what kind of builds we can put together for PvE and PvP activities I can't wait for Shadow Kick to drop and uh, I hope you're excited as I am anyway thank you for tuning in if you like this video hit that like button subscribe is always appreciated until then, I'll see you next time.